go. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, who are you? You're a comedian, former athlete, Yahoo Sports face. Yeah. Host. I'm- I'm actually an alien. You're uh, an alien. Yeah, I, 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 I've been hiding in plain sight. Nobody. Well, that'll be good for roommate stories. No, no, no. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm a former athlete. Uh, yeah. Really good at that. Uh, I got as far as you can You're get, so but... good at it, you're not doing it anymore. <laughs> what is it? I, I got as far as an athlete you can get what without getting rich like it was it was oh. like yeah it was like it was like a 50 50 chance i'd be a millionaire 50 50 chance i start doing stand-up comedy and as you can see which side worked out so did you start doing stand-up after you quit playing football my first time was my junior year of football and i remember mm. i had my whole team come out and they, i was like yo this is gonna be the worst. you know you're a comedian you know you're like people if i do a bad set here i would never live this down and i thought they were That's gonna be true. booing and they were the best audience ever and i killed and everybody was like you funny as hell so i did it like six times but you can't be a college athlete and a comedian. It just didn't work. Wait, I, why? Because I was waking up at like 5.30 in the morning to do meeting and practice and staying up to get on the mic at 10.30, 11 o'clock in Kyoto, Kyocho, Kaliocho in mid of Miami. I feel like, I don't know, the guys, because I had a lot of football friends in college and like they never, they were always out late. Like they were not in bed early. Uh, you you got to think about it because I wasn't sacrificing. They were, they were in to, bed with women, you know. Yes, yeah, comedy time. You have to sacrifice, all right? So you're like, do I want to yeah. give up school time? Do I want to give up football time? Yeah. I don't want to give up chasing women time. And I'm, that's not negotiable. Chasing women was not give comedy was not going to stop me from hitting my quota. No. Well, you haven't <laughs> given up any of those things yet well, so yeah. is that why you haven't made it in comedy yet i gave it a football <laughs> i'm famous I'm, time is linear you know but i'm I famous think, already in that's my why head, you're on my podcast in my head i'm a superstar like people go oh, really? me like holy shit jerry was doing that man how many followers do you have on instagram it, does that matter does it matter i mean i think an agent would tell you that it matters yeah they do like i sometimes i'll be like man i can get you fifty thousand if you had like seventy five thousand followers but you're tight so i'm just gonna squeeze you in but i'm just at a point of like it's quality followers i got a sh- the reason i got my show is quality followers the people who watch my shit make decisions i got decision makers following me some of these people just got high school girls that like every photo some of these followers are bot. They're robots. They've been bot from, you know, it's a it's an Indian man with 70,000. You're very defensive about your small following. No, it's it's not a small is this following. A, is this, a it's con- not, is this what men do to overcompensate with small following? Oh, this, is this is your this measure a, thing? It's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a 75 yeah. God, million Yeah, I have my team measure in the bag. Yeah, no, my following is, it's, it's, it's not the size of the following count. It's the motion of the following. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the motion of the likes hitting the page. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, no, but, and then I started doing comedy, and honestly, I like comedy more. Than sports. Yeah, I, I look back and I go, how was I doing that? Yeah, there's the bells and the whistles, you're a millionaire, know. everybody knows your name, you got fans, but comedy is like a genuine audience. But you weren't a millionaire. I was close. I had signed a contract. My contract I signed, if I didn't get cut, I was going to make $450,000 the first year. Okay, so that's not even half a million. Well, I mean, at the time, you, you, you weren't even fifty percent of the way right, there. All right, Jesus! At this point, <laughs> is this what this podcast is? The roast? Is this the roast? I didn't even know what I was getting myself just, signed no, up no, for. No, no, no. We can talk about your. No, roommate. we're changing it. It's my podcast now. Guys. No, it's not. Welcome to the Chairquay no. podcast. We're gonna talk to Maria about her roommate situation. That's what we're doing. I'm up. <laughs> I've never had a roommate in my life. Just kidding. Jesus. Uh, well, no, tell, I'm kidding. Tell I'm us kidding. you're wealthy without telling us you're wealthy. No, I have, no I have, like, the whole reason I started this podcast is because I've had like 13 roommates over the course of my life, but I didn't have eight That's siblings like number. you. That's an unlucky number. 13. Well, I'm going to have 14 pretty soon because I got to get a new roommate. So, Well, all right. I'm, I'm pretty sure you heard this, but usually if you have a friend, you shouldn't become roommates with them because you yeah, I've never had. Smoke. I've never been. Well, no, I was roommates with friends in college, but yeah. like not since then it's always been like random people it starts off as a good idea it's like i like spending time with you we should live together be around no. each other. and by like a month Mm-mm. in you like i never want to see you again so no, 13 no. is like that you that's you've lost 13 friends no i'm on good terms with everybody because they weren't my friends I mean, yeah, like in a sense of like a business deal, like would I room with you again if need be? You weren't terrible, like business. Yeah, no, but nobody's like, oh, I got to have Maria at my birthday party or else it's not fun. OK, damn. What am I not? OK, this that's going down a road. I, uh, I'm, what do you I'm, mean I'm not fun? I'm no, fun. No, I, yes, that wasn't like a therapy session. Like, so <laughs> like, I'm just saying once you become roommates with somebody, it's hard to. No, I just got invited friends. to one of my old roommates weddings. 
Oh. I should probably RSVP. I haven't yeah. done it yet, but. What did, what did, did they get, what did they get together when you were in the picture? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. I've had, like, the place I've lived, the first roommate I had, she started dating this guy, and then, like, his lease was up, and they were going to move in together, but his lease was up before her lease was up with me, and so he moved in with her and I for, like, it felt like six months, but it was, like, a month, and my oh. my apartment's not really big enough to do all that, and, like, they were also not really sure if they wanted to be together at oh, that time. Like, it was bad. a big transition period. Like, you know how relationships are where it's like, when you're trying to figure out if you really want to be with somebody long-term, but there might be, like, a bad spell in there, yeah. but usually you go through it on your own, like, yeah. not without somebody like me around. And so I was around... And they're trying to work on stuff. You're technically part of that relationship. I was. Yeah, yeah, I thought I was like, uh, this is awkward. And then they moved in together. And then, like, they've moved around. Like, they moved to New York, Dallas, whatever. Now they're getting married. So, like, it all worked out. And then my second roommate, same thing happened. Her boyfriend came over from, like, the UK or something and needed a place to stay before they moved in together. So he moved in with us. Are you good luck, And then son? they, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then they, and then they started having problems too. While we were like, it's just like, they were in these transitional times. And so I've always said, is your, is your relationship on the rocks? Do you need a place to stay? Do you want to work things out with a third person just hanging around? I Call me. That's a real bit. Like you could, should, like people go to marriage counseling. You should just be like, we'll see if this works. I'm gonna live with you guys for a year. Oh my god. <laughs> we'll see it's where all, this goes. Well, so now it's the same. It's not the same thing. But my current roommate has a boyfriend, and they're gonna move in together. But his lease is not up, so she's gonna move in with him. But like he's around a lot, and so I wouldn't have been surprised if that had happened. If they were gonna move into like a new place together, where. He would have moved in with is us for weird? a while. I feel but... like this is that tell of like always a bridesmaid, never a bride. How come you have so many rumors that are just falling in love just wedding after wedding? I don't know. Oh. I like to be alone. You hear that? Whoever you whoever you <laughs> date right now, you, you, no. you hear that? No, listen I, and listen and clear. I date people who also like to be alone. Like you have to be, like as a comic, you have to be able to like respect alone time, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I hate it no, still. You don't like to be alone. Even when I'm on the road. You're the, like, the opposite. You're like a total extrovert. Yeah. 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 Was that hard growing up with all your siblings sharing uh, a bed? Oh, so yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, <laughs> I'm the youngest of eight children. Uh, one of my siblings, one of the eight of us got really, really rich and famous. I won't tell you what he does, but judging off my looks and color and skin tone, you probably can guess. Um <laughs> I mean, that's what people, uh, yeah, and so we grew up like, and we were poor. That's the thing. It's like my life is really weird because, like, were you like we know poor, poor, or you just say that? Because some people uh, say that, and then they start talking. Like, I don't think you were maybe mm. compor poor compared to your friends. No, but not. we were so poor that you know, like when you're a kid, how you poor were you? You don't know how poor you are as a kid. You're just like, yeah. I'm having fun. These are yeah. my friends, and you yes. get back. You're like, that was Section Eight. Like, you know. <laughs> You don't realize it as a kid, but then you get an adult, and then you get become an adult with money, and then you get like, like lavish house. Like my yeah. mom, this is the, the weird thing, and I'm, I'm oversharing, but let's get intimate, all right? I've yes. always been an open book. I'm an extrovert. My mom still has the mindset of like we all need to be in the house and need room, so mm. she's like by herself in this huge house, and I'm like, mom, this is too much room for you. How many bedrooms does she have now? Uh, I mean, it's like it's like 3,500 square feet in Chandler, Arizona. Nice. Yeah, but it's her by herself. So? And, and I think like, even when I'm there alone, I'm like, there might be ghosts here. I can hear it. Like, <laughs> is that kind of... Is, well, how big was the house you grew up in? All right. So then this is what happened, okay? We grew up and we moved a hundred times, all right? A hundred times. That's a lot. I, I, in fact, I, just, I am a professional mover because of how much I moved. I went to a bunch of different schools. But we settled in a house that I considered my childhood house when I was 10. Okay. And that one was a four-bedroom house where there was 10 people living in. Oh, my God. And uh, me and my brother Severin and Calais, we shared a room. We had a, me and my brother Severin shared a bed until I was like nine. What size bed? Like what? A twin? It, it was not, it was like one of them ones where it was like a twin <laughs> on the top, queen on the bottom, right? And keep in mind, we're smaller Wait, kids. Wait, like here. a bunk bed? Yeah. Oh, well, that's not sharing a bed. No, no, no. It oh. was three of us on a two person bunk bed. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, it was fancy. And so uh, I got peed on once. This is me being overly, yeah. I'm going to share. By your brother? Yeah, they're on the top bunk. 
I'm not going to name the one who was on the top bunk because I don't want to get too personal. <laughs> but he <laughs> had batter, he had bladder. He didn't control his bladder when he was sleeping. I've always been good at that. How old was up. he when he did this? This is when he was like eight. Okay. And I was about six. Okay. And I just remember waking up like, what's going on? <laughs> and the next thing you know, my mom, I, she was like, oh my God. And we had to go take a shower at three in the morning. And that, yeah, that's the kind of thing Did I that grew scar up. you for life? I don't know. I haven't been. You didn't I'm, I'm new to it. therapy. I'm new to therapy. I don't know if these things have. I've just been moving, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Keeping my head on the sofa. I don't sleep great because I never know when, you know, shower, golden shower's coming. <laughs> oh I'm oversharing here, but I'm. This is no, I, this I is great. I told you this will be your best episode ever, all right? I, okay, well, the, we'll let the people decide. The people have decided, all right? They're no, they have. They haven't decided. I they're watching the it now. They're, they're, just, they're, they're trying to decide if they're right going to turn now. it off. Somebody's commenting right now. Oh, my God. That happened to me before. You'd be surprised. Your fan base is... No. Be, you think people are just in bunk beds peeing on each other? Like, that's normal? I didn't say bunk just beds. Because just because Your fan base is getting peed is, on. Just because <laughs> Trump was into golden showers doesn't mean everybody I'm just, is. I'm, 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 the internet just makes people weirder. I'm just saying, I would say 35% of your viewership is somebody who either desires to get peed on or has... 35%? Yes, 35. You guys, he thinks he knows you. All 13 of you. No, there's... Wow, that's rude. 13? I don't have more viewers than that. No, 13 are getting peed on. So like 13 people? 65. No. I don't know math that well. Okay. We're, you're, this is a lot of hypotheticals, <laughs> and I was make, I'm getting mad. Uh, uh, well, okay, so you got peed on. Did anybody ever poop the bed? Oh, no. that's a, I think that's like That a, could happen. That's like drug addict thing. I don't even wonder one person... Who, You've never who, like had the flu before and been never like, shit Oop. bed. No, <laughs> that's enough. Like that's enough to be like, yeah, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving. I mom. can just see you at eight. <laughs> like I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling social service on myself. Uh, no, uh, never shit. That's disgusting. Actually, if anybody is shits in the bed, but people do it. That's a thing. Yeah. I mean, I would like divorce. if you're sick, I would get divorced. If, if someone you would get, to, what if you're not married to them? That's why. I mean, that's that's, that's you never. You, I've had the flu before and like woken up and been like, you don't have like total control, so like maybe a little bit, not like all so the you're whole thing. On your own podcast is you shit the bed. No, no, like if you've had the flu, people. There's at least thirty five percent of people out there that, that have had. I, I'm, I'm, I was unaware of this. Apparently, there's a big market. Well, like if shit you, the bed. yeah, or like if you have food poisoning or something, like. You don't have total control over what's going on in your body. I do, though. And in my head, maybe I haven't been there. I, oh, I, you're just I, so in control. Point, I'm wearing the pins. I'm literally <laughs> pull up to the damn... I, would, that's I almost think that's messier. Pull-ups? Yeah. Yeah, imagine. I mean, you know. Now you're making me visualize something. You know, yeah, I have a daughter. Yeah. So is it? yeah. <laughs> a blowout, Grandpa. No. Is she still wearing <laughs> diapers or no? Uh, For sleep. To sleep time. Yeah, see, in case she shits the bed. No, I, you wanted to be prepared. More, more urine. <laughs> Shit in the bed takes like muscles and focus. I don't think you could just naturally do okay. No, but that's why if you're sick, you don't have control of all those muscles and focus and like. Really, the, I feel like I've yeah, mastered control really of my thin. body from being a superior athlete. <laughs> I just, oh my god! I only shit when I want to shit. So of all, so of all the. People that you grew up living with, that's the most traumatizing story is the urine nah, story. One of them. I mean, I've gotten whippings. You got to realize, like, uh, one time. Like with a belt? I was the youngest. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up in an era where that was common, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you didn't get ass whooping, people were like, what's wrong with I you? Never, I never even got spanked. And that's why people That's why people don't invite you to their birthday party. Because I didn't get spanked? Yeah. Spanking is a big part of development. No, Stud it's not. Studies show that, yeah. Who says? Um... It's a YouTube video. You're just making <laughs> things up. Yeah, you watch everything on YouTube. You're like, yeah, hey, it's real. Yeah, YouTube. I, I seen someone on YouTube. They told me that aliens were black. <laughs> no. They said aliens came and it was black. I was like, what? But anyways, all right, enough. It's enough of conspiracy theories. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, one time my, one of my brothers broke the sink. And, you know, we that's when we learned, like, no snitching. And so we took oh. it to the grave. And we all got weapons because of that. Because you wouldn't say who did it? I genuinely didn't know who did it. They didn't tell <laughs> me. But, <laughs> but we took the, we all took the whooping, man. We had to wow. eat it. Wow. Yeah, so I learned a lot. But you, do you know why the sink broke? Like, what uh, happened? Was it clogged? Did they, like, I, put I, off I'm the not wall? mentioning names, but I heard the rumors of who actually did it. But at the time we just took it, we was like, we don't know. So who fixed it? Oh, my mom and dad, you know, adults. Adults do, <laughs> adults do what adults do, you know? <laughs> so, but who is the most problematic of all? Because you, I think you told me before we started doing this 
podcast that you were the problem roommate at some point. Oh, I am to this day. Oh. Um, I'm the youngest of eight. I grew up in very close boundaries with my siblings. Yeah. So I don't really understand boundaries. Uh, I'm the kind mm. of person, I'm the roommate that wakes up at, you know, I've come home at three and turn the TV on and, you know. <laughs> so you're loud, obnoxious. Yeah, I'm the roommate like, oh, I'll wash the dishes tomorrow and then tomorrow happens next week, you know, like. So you're just not responsible is what I'm, you're saying. I'm, well, I've been without a roommate, ha, 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 <laughs> for about six years now. So, you know, when you live on your own, you have to do it, you know, in yeah. order to succeed. How long will you go without doing the dishes before you're like, I got to do the dishes? Um, well, I, I do the dishes. If I'm leaving out of town, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do the dishes. But I try to uh, get paper plates and, you know, just preventive, you know, preventative care. Oh, my care. God. So you're just creating more garbage yeah, instead of being sustainable. Zone. Yeah, plastic sporks and shit. Yeah. It's amazing Cancel to me, me what men will do to avoid doing dishes. Like you'll go buy, like I would never buy that to avoid doing dishes. Like and I might order takeout and not use a plate. You want to know what the sad part about it is? It, I, I have a dishwasher. Okay. Yeah. And I still, I, I, what do I you do? probably have a nice place in general. Like pretty you probably easy. have a nice dishwasher. That, it, it is. It's pretty nice. But Do you I even still, know how to use it? I, I mean, yeah, but I still sometimes you be like, you got to really clean dishes really well before you even put them in a dishwasher. You know, that's not misconception. It's not just like, after you finish eating, rinse it and put it in the snow because it still be kind of dirty. So I just hand wash when I do wash. I, get, I throw my sleeves up. I fill up the, the, the sink up and I hand wash. But There's something is, wrong with you. I, I never claim to be normal. I never, I never once was like, I'm I like you. Like it's just so easy. I don't know. Like dishwashers were made to make people's lives easier. And men are like, nope, it makes my life so much harder. I got to use a paper plate. Paper plates are lifesavers. In fact, I feel like I'm going to start a, a, a petition to make sure that they should do free paper plates and spoons and stuff for everybody, man. Free? Free. We can't get tampons for free, and you think we should get paper plates for free? Tampons are a luxury. It's, an, it's a luxury. I'm I'm blown away. Yeah. Bombshell. That's not, you can't say that. Really? If it was like, we it's need 2022. To we should be getting them for free. And instead we get taxed on women's products more than, and you think it's a luxury. Yeah. It's just like people buy you're stickers. Just being, people buy you're tampons. just, you're just being playing devil's advocate at this I point. I don't know. I've never had a tampon. I really don't know. What You've never had a tampon? I, I, we I, can I, change that. I see. I go, it's not that they got gender neutral bathrooms. I see the little box and I'm like, oh, I would never open it. You've never it had to buy tampons for a woman before? Nah. I gave it money for tampons, but I've never actually. You've lived with a woman though, right? Like a girlfriend? Yeah. And you but, never had to. she didn't work. I did the work. So, you know, when it comes to that, it's like gender roles. <laughs> So you were like, People bitch, you can buy your me. own tampons. People are going to hate me. No, it's not that I wouldn't. It's not like I have a phobia of buying tampons. It just Would you be been. embarrassed to go do it? No, I'm not embarrassed of anything. I just told you a story about getting peed on it. Like, I'm not... I know, but I feel like nowadays that's not even that big People of a deal. even weirder. I was at Target the other day, and they're, they're selling vibrators at Target. Yeah, they're selling them everywhere. They sell them at Urban Outfitters. Like, I didn't know. That's they're the thing. everywhere. I know. Yeah. And so people are ashamed to buy tampons. Imagine going to the checkout desk with a full ass vibrator in your hands. Yeah, I know. Can men and women be roommates? I think so. You don't think so? You don't think they can without sexual tension? Mm. Do you, you think two? Two lesbians who are not together could live together without sexual tension. I don't know. I feel like because uh, like that's that's not a world I becoming, know that well. I know, but men, you know what I'm saying. I like, know men. I feel like we're lesbians got good discipline, and respect. You know, they understand boundaries. But men, at some point, you have to master discipline. Being a roommate with a female, especially if she's attractive. Because unless you guys is clearly, because roommates in LA are different than roommates everywhere else. LA, you can have a roommate that you see once a year. Like you, <laughs> you can literally cross paths where you're yeah. like, I never see this person. Yeah. But like if you're in the same proximity with someone for an amount of time and if both you people are single, like it's natural order that eventually you're like, you know what, I'm lonely. Come watch this movie with me. Oh, wow, she's touching my leg. But I feel like you have to have, like, the door would have to be open to some degree. Like, like, if somebody's always like, yeah, I'm, like, you want to come and watch this movie with me? If the other person always says no, then it's never going to happen. Yeah, but what kind of roommate do you want to just be like, no, I hate you. I'm only here because I'm only here because your rent is cheaper than everybody else. Yeah. I don't want to spend any time with you. You're a shitty person. Yeah. 
Yeah, if that's perfect the case, roommate. Yeah. That's the perfect roommate. Yeah, that's a roommate. I thought I, I low key. I, that's what I miss about the fact that I live on my own now for so long. I just miss the random encounters you would have with a roommate. You know, you just like man, you know. Like what? Like what did you used to have? Actually, my last roommate. This is a good hit. Uh, he's a cool roommate. I mentioned his name. He's an Asian man named Tommy Lee. Uh, <laughs> he's, he have a big dick. He's, he's half Asian, like the half real white. Tommy Lee. This time, does the drummer tell me you have a huge dick? Oh, yeah. You didn't see? He posted on Instagram not that long I'm ago. I'm not really in the dick pic market. I don't know. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Usually, it was, I, it was stumbled, trending on Twitter. If I stumble on a dick pic, it's the big black dude in like inside of like a, a meme, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's how I stumble. I, it's not like I'm just like, oh, shit. Oh, you don't stumble across your own? No, my dick pics, you know, every time I see him, like, oh, who's dick is that? <laughs> it's, oh, that's me. Okay. <laughs> no. Um. My roommate Tommy Lee, actually, he was he, is you, an enigma of a person. All right, we went to college together. Wow, uh, you lived here together? Yeah, this oh, is okay. my first roommate here, or second roommate here. Uh, he was a, a Q dog. I don't know if you noticed, know but that's a prominent black fraternity. Uh, the the Qs are like the like dogs, like they bite women in the ass. Pretty much might get canceled in modern day culture. Oh my god! Yeah, that's their culture, just the dogs. And he's this Asian and white guy who joined this black fraternity. And then afterwards realized it probably wasn't the best decision. <laughs> and he, you guys went to college together. We went to college together, but we came closer as roommates and as adults. And so he taught me things. Like one time I was watching Midnight in Paris eating cheese and looking at <laughs> magazines, drinking wine. And I was like, man, I've never done this. This would not be, an, I would have never crossed this path had not you be my roommate doing this wild shit that I just stumbled upon. And I love it. I, I, who Wait, so known? he put he was like, let's watch Midnight in Paris together and drink like, you wine. Watch it. It's a good movie. Well, he was a writer and he always tried to tell me like philosophy okay. and like teach you to write. So, so he like, introduced you to like the finer things in life. Yeah, Is that I what was, you're yeah, he put me on okay. in a weird way. It was like, damn, this is a nice date. I wish you were a fine <laughs> woman. Oh, <my> <laughs> So what else did he do that was like that? Like, did well, he take you out to tea on Saturday afternoons or well, what? He came into some money. I think uh, someone mm. in his family died and left him in Harris. And mm. then he started just hooking up the living room. One day I would come in and it was just like overly fancy. Like, where did we get this nice chase lounge, you know? <laughs> and I had learned that what that meant because of we had one. Because he would just went out and bought like this velvet suede. Like <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so, yeah, he made a nice... Uh, <laughs> He was a person, so I, you know, as you get older, you grow beards and you start uh -huh. shaving and you don't uh -huh. necessarily know how to clean it up 100%. Uh -huh. That's a skill you learn over time. Uh -huh. And so I would always have little hairs in the sink and he'd be like, God damn it, Campbell. If I was strong and I could whoop your ass, I would fight you. But please, man, can you please pick up those little baby hairs on the side of the brim of the sink? And did you? Yeah, I would try to, but you, you know, See the get it tomorrow. <laughs> we had this discussion on another episode where we had the... There's the thing you can buy that you stick to the mirror and it's like it's like a bib and you put it on when you shave and then we pulled it up on the last um on the last episode with him cuz he'd never heard of it. You you've never heard of it either. It's like a, a bib. That's a gift. That, that's a good invention whoever did, but that's something yeah. that they're not advertising to me. I feel like I've, the Instagram should be targeting me to buy things like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm well maybe it will now. I mean, if you have your phone on here then Oh, because they're always listening? After the, yeah, yeah, after this is over. Because we were talking about that. We were talking about the oh, ball shit. shavers. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at the model. That's an, the that's beard a weird king. Thing. Could you imagine I remember walking the in on your roommate in the bathroom and he's like got a whole little parachute? Well, I feel like if you'd, ha <laughs> if you'd had that when you were living with Tommy Lee, he would have thought you were an all-American hero. I know, but honestly, being a bad <laughs> roommate helped me develop as a person. Because Tommy Lee, you know, he would get fed when he gets so angry with me that I would feel bad. And I was like, you know what? I got to get my shit together in my own place. I had okay. to get my own place rather than learning how to clean and do the tedious little shit. That when he do. would call you out, would you get defensive? Would I mean, you be like, no, I, I didn't do that. I'd be like, fuck you, this show here. No. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, I'm respectable. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, if there's anything about me, I, one thing I'll call to myself is I can listen and take, you know, critiques and not be like, you asshole, you're just trying to, why do you hate me? And I go, maybe he's right. He may he has a point. I should do this. Thank you. I'll work on that. Yeah. And then I don't. But at the same time, I can listen to him. No, oh, that's good. I'm also a good roommate, though. I'm fun. You're fun. That's what I you bring, bring to the table. Over. We used to drink a lot and have people come over and good times. Like, I think overall, all the little shit, if he had to wait, if you did a survey of all my old roommates, be like, would, do you miss Jared as a roommate? They would say, yeah. Really? Yeah. Because the goods outweigh the bads. That's what you, is. I feel like that's your motto for your whole life. 
It's in life. Life is yin and yang. If I've met anybody that has no flaws, you're a boring person. But it's not about flaws. It's just, but you think that the pros outweigh the cons in your personality. In life. In life. Yeah, if you want people that life is you want to that's the people you want to be around. People that you can't stand things about, but at the same time, you can't really live without some of the things they bring. No, I don't want to be around people I can't stand. But that's what makes you you can't stand them because they're different than you. But them being different than you brings more into yes. your life. Yes. Let's change this whole theme of this podcast. It's not even humor no more, oh guys. This is a self-help book, all right? <laughs> oh, I don't want any more help. No, you need it. Listen to me and listen I, to me oh, quick. I need help. I don't need help. All right. Anyone who says they don't need help probably needs Steve also. <laughs> I was hoping you would say that. Oh, there we go. Well, let's lean into it. Therapy yeah. session has started. No, I don't. No. All right, would, you, would you, I mean, based off roommates and, you know, room for rent, would you consider yourself a good roommate? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best roommate ever, one being, I hate that person. I think I'm a very good roommate. I think I'm a very good roommate and also a very good friend. And I think those two things do kind of go together, even though you were like, oh, you shouldn't live with your friends. But I think because I'm a good friend and I know how to just be good to people, that if you come correct to the roommate situation, like it'll be very easy because we can be adults about like, like my current roommate, we don't have like, okay, on Sundays we have to clean or like if she doesn't vacuum i don't get mad it's like if i want to vacuum i just vacuum and then like when she it's just not it's you it's just, like responsible yeah but it's not when i move in like when i post a roommate thing online when i look for a new one because i found like people on facebook marketplace and stuff and i put a whole scary? no wait are you laughing over there because you because i said facebook marketplace that why? Wait, like why is that? Get I found no. I found my first roommate down here. Or there, I found my second one Especially there. Especially as a woman, I just feel like it's so dangerous. No, because I find. I think it's because of where I live. I live in an area that's not as entertainment based in LA, and so I find people who like work in the tech space or like work in medicine or work in marketing like no no no, no. they know that but they're not like like starving actresses who are like trying to become influencers and shit like Mm. that so like they're stable they have financial they're not laid on rent yeah no they get it that like but i put so i put that the rent's like a couple hundred dollars more than what it is because it includes utilities and so when i don't have to get into a back and forth about that i put that i have a dog i put that i don't over what? No, no, it, no. I just am like, it's this much, but then also with utility. So the total's like this much. And they're like, okay, great. Because then they don't have to ask the question or like try to figure it out. Uh, and then I put like, I have a pet. I don't want anybody with more pets. I don't really Damn, drink that much. Like, shit. I don't really go out that much. When I do, it's for comedy. Like, I'm a night person. I, I put everything about who I am. So when people hit me up, like, they're hitting me up because... That makes sense to them. See, not because. Smart. See, I, yeah. now that you're saying this, I realize. I mess around. If anybody was trying to holler at you, all they had to do was just go look at your listing of <laughs> no, your house no. and then get on a, a social media <laughs> and be like, is it weird? But I kind of like staying home on Friday. <laughs> no, like, no. That, that's your in. No, I think I don't we know should do with roommates because I'm trying to fix the world because I'll be running for president in 2060. Um, 2060? Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing it young. You get gray and old and so shit. But 2060, gonna... you're going to be like 80. Isn't that what we're going with right now? That's what that's 80 versus 80, is that not what we Yeah, doing? but I don't know that it's a good thing. I don't want to be young and have that kind of pressure, and you got to be out the office and have people looking at you. And you really want to run for president? Is yeah, that a real dream? Yeah, the world. You ready? I think we should do algorithms. I think we should let the computers pick roommates. You go through, like, an intensive, like, personality You watch test. too much YouTube. I do, but at the same you, time, yeah, you, you, you don't think an know. algorithm. I, I'm, I'm at a point where we should get arranged marriages, but definitely for roommates. If you an algorithm be like based off you guys' personalities, your trends, your patterns of when you leave houses. This would be an optimal roommate situation. But the, you know, this is already not working, right? Because this is what they're trying to do with online dating, and it doesn't work. No, online dating is different because human psychology. The fact that you think there's endless options means you slowly to pick on one. No, it, they're like hinge. Like they try to hook you up with somebody who has. Like like mindedness. Yeah, but then you go. Ah, I don't like the fact you don't watch Game of Thrones, and then you go to the next person. Hinge like, how about this person? Yeah, but the Ruby thing is the same. It's all no, the same. Nothing. I life is not I an algorithm. Like, I want it to be either. Either you should just move to China. Your roommate thing yeah, over there is an I, algorithm. I, you're right. And I, yeah. Bye. See ya. Yeah, it just seems like it's stupid. It's like I don't want to make decisions. I want the government to make decisions for me. I don't want it to be like, man, I gotta find out the job that it makes. I just want to be like, fuck it. Let me get this work done. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Damn it. Really it's changed back. Yeah. No, you don't think that an algorithm would be optimal for a roommate situation? No. Well, yeah, it'd probably be hard. I like, I like the humanness of life. Well, yeah, you would get that based off the algorithm. No, it's not I just, like it's no a because then everything, it's like if it didn't work out, it was like, well, it didn't work out. It must have been the algorithm or it did work. Like there's no, it takes away, like I don't like online dating for the same reason. I don't like any, I don't like algorithm mixed stuff. Online dating is like you got to find someone you want to spend all your time with and to like the things you like and learn. This is someone literally like, you you don't like people being at the house when you're at the house. This person's algorithm says that you guys have opposite schedules and you guys should probably only interact with each other maybe on weekends. That's an algorithm. No, I, I don't like that. Comment behind if you think an algorithm would be better for roommates. You're on Facebook. You're on you're on Craigslist finding potential serial killers based off. No, of I'm it. not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I meet really nice people. Yeah, I mean, everybody's nice till you get to know them. I have the okay. The craziest roommate I've ever had was I moved into a place in Santa Monica, and there were two other girls. And like the one girl that was the main girl who'd lived there the longest, she was cool. And then there was this other girl that moved in the same time I moved in, and she was insane. She had an online shopping addiction that was like before Amazon got really popular. She was having Amazon packages delivered every single day, and it would be like a guitar, rollerblades. A frozen that's how they get you. banana maker that's, that's thing. How they get you. But this girl thing. ate so many frozen bananas in one day, she had to give herself an enema. Because you know, if you eat too many bananas, you get constipated. Really? And she ate, she would just eat frozen bananas. Like, Damn. And then one day I saw her and I was like, how are you? I don't even remember her name. And she was like, oh, I just had to give myself an enema because I ate too many frozen bananas. And I'm like, what? And, I mean, there was this crazy. That's the honesty. I admire the honesty that remains. She didn't have to share that. She didn't, and I to this day <laughs> wish that she hadn't. Like, I mean, the vulnerability has got to be at least for no. Some. She was at, she was like totally absent minded, and like she made you know the cabbage soup diet. Have you ever heard of that? It's no. like a thing girls do to like lose weight or whatever, and so they'll make cabbage like this certain kind of cabbage soup, and it's supposed to be like I think it's like a cleanse or something. It's like fast. And so she, and yeah, so she made it in my crock pot, and then she huh. she went out and she left the soup on all night. Like she left it on overnight. And forgot. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, it smells weird. But I was like on my way to work or whatever. And then I came home later that day and she came out of her room and she had a giant burn down her leg. And I was like, what happened to you? And she goes, oh, I went to try the cabbage soup because I forgot that I left it on all night. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad the house didn't burn down. And then she picked up the ceramic part of the crock pot to try to just try the soup, which is insane. She thought it would And it was so hot. She, she like it. spilled it and it went all over the kitchen. It went all over. Like she had like second degree burns oh. on her legs from soup. That's sad. This is a sad turn. That's, She's a, and that's but your she is man. wacky. Yeah. But she didn't, I found like the place and she was moving in the same time I moved in. Like I didn't have anything to do with like, her coming in but she was crazy and then one day she came home and she was like yeah i just like found a bag of cocaine in my purse and i was like so what'd you do with it like throw it away because i'm not a drug person it's yeah. so like if i found a bag of cocaine in my purse i'd be like ah! but cocaine is not necessarily the cheapest you know at that point you no, look at yeah. it as either a problem well, or so, something like yeah hey, so I, I was lottery. like what did you do like uh, I, like and she goes i just did it and i was like i just i just did all the cocaine i was like oh Okay, at the time, like I, re I didn't, I knew fentanyl. less it's about drugs fentanyl. when that happened. Fentanyl, right? Yeah, and I okay. knew less about drugs then than I, like I know more Sometimes now. Sometimes you don't have a druggy roommate to understand drugs. It's kind of like. But the best she would. Class this course. is okay. So this is the craziest thing. She would sleep. We had it was a three bedroom, three bathroom, and her room had access to the balcony that we had, and she would sleep outside on the balcony. Well, she was a drug addict. I don't. Why? Yeah. Why did you say that? I think she's just like, like sleeping very in the side. drug addict -y type of behavior. She, that's like the priest that before getting a tent. <laughs> yeah, no, she had like, you know, those couches that like, it was basically a futon, like it folds down and it's sort of a bed. She had one of those out there and she would sleep on it. Hmm. And this was in Santa Monica. Like this is in, it's chilly at what night. Floor? What like, floor? The third floor, Okay, I that means you don't got to worry about nothing coming to like, grab you or anything. So, yeah. I, I guess. It's not but terrible. She worked for Laura Ingram. 
Oh. Do you know you know who Laura yeah, Ingram is? Yeah. 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 And Shut she up was, and dribble, don't you didn't know that? Or no, she, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. But it was before she got really this was like pre Trump, pre Damn Trump really like, put a lot Obama of people Obama was on. definitely <laughs> still, yeah. You don't realize how many people blew up because of Trump, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she was crazy. She was like, Yeah, I think Jeb Bush is so hot. I'm like, oh. She, that's who she wanted. That was it. Was when Jeb Bush was running for that's president. Take. Yeah. yeah, you never really realize when people are into that kind of thing when they're like, "Yo, I like bigotry." As it turns me on, it's just like, "Yeah, David, she Duke. was crazy. That's my type." <laughs> Yo, so Tommy Lee, though, let's talk back. No, I got he... so many roommate stages. You want to go crazy? I don't know how to. Yeah, I want to you to show. go crazy. I don't know how to. There is no structure. All we right. just talk. All right, my my, I my weirdest roommate is a, is a guy named Damian Barry. We were doormates in college. Okay, and. I like I said, I could sleep in chaotic situations because of my growing mm-hmm. up upbringing, and for some reason, me and him just would sleep with the music blasting, speakers blasting. This is back oh, like, no. and they would like go to R and B music late nights. So you just wake up, be pretty Ricky playing at like four in the morning. I would <laughs> strangle somebody. Well, yeah, that but at this point, that was just our oh, routine. We would both sleep with loud, loud music playing, and I would have a girl come and she's like, "What the fuck is going on?" And I'm like, "Sorry, this is just our routine. I think I'm gonna turn it off. He'll wake up." You know. <laughs> That's it? That's that, the that, crazy that's story? Cra- no, that, I mean, I, look, I don't want to get canceled, you know. You don't want to get canceled. Uh, that was a unique story. That's a roommate, come on, let's be honest, in a dorm. Could you imagine your dorm, like, party music playing every night while you sleep? Yeah, that would be crazy. That was our lifestyle. So do you sleep now with stuff on? Um... Like, I like the TV on. I do. I like to sleep with the TV on. So somebody, on. like, if you fell asleep with the TV on and then somebody came in and turned it off, would you be like, hey, I was watching that? But I kind of wake asleep. up subconsciously, subconsciously. If somebody turns it off. Right now, like, now the TV would shut off because they're smart. And they're like, you're not watching this anymore. And I'm like, hey, what the hell? You yeah. won't come on sleep. Your man. Is that women, all men? I don't think women really fall asleep with the TV on. The way women need pitch men blackness. They need pitch oh, blackness. Yeah. Yes. I think. I, I mean, sleep with a, a, with a blanket over my head. This may sound like generalizing, but I just feel from my experiences, women have a tougher time falling asleep than men. Like melatonin is probably being bought more by women than men. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't take do melatonin. The what? Well, I, do the studies. I just think it is. I just. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. That's one of the the, the unfair things of life. I don't like to look. You look at data for everything. Well, You're dude, like, look at the studies. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. None of my friends take melatonin, so. Well, I don't think that's a public thing. I think melatonin is kind of like. No, no. A lot of people give it to their kids, and they're very public. Like, I have friends that give it to their kids. That's they torture. Don't take that's it. child abuse. Oh, I don't know. That I, I would rather abuse. my kids be getting peed on in bunk beds than to be being forced to sleep with, the, like, uh, put you under surgery type of drug. Yeah. I mean, I don't love it. I wouldn't, I don't know that I would give my kids melatonin, but a lot of people do it. What about roommate situation? Just because you just said that. How would you feel about being roommates with someone who has a child? Uh, I probably wouldn't do that. I don't think anyone would want to, but just say you want one of your roommates that was just like, oh shit, I'm pregnant. And then they just decided not to move out right away. Well, pregnant and birth is different. Like pregnant, the kid's not there yet to take care of. But then you just be like, all right, you, you you have a baby now. You need to change your life and grow up. Get the fuck out of my house. Well, I, 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 the hope, I think, I don't know. I mean, having a baby You're right. changes I, everything. You got to go back home. You got to, if you don't yeah, have, to you have, have, if you yeah, have a roommate yeah. and you have a baby, you need to move back with Yeah, mom. I mean, I think it would depend on who it was. Like, if it was one of my best friends. Then I'd be like, oh, we'll just raise this baby together. You You'd know? be like, I, 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 I was You'd like, going. to some degree, like roommate, yeah, like maybe. Parenting. But then, but then, if it was, I don't know. If it was, I don't know, I don't know. Like, if it was your kid, I don't know. I'd be like, Jared, you gotta get your shit together. What if my my daughter? My daughter's adorable. I feel like you would like my daughter. Probably. You want to be roommates? Want to be no, I don't. <laughs> I just episode is so all over the place that I feel like I it could be better as clips. You're gonna get a lot yeah. of clips from this. The whole episode, people watch it like, "Yo, this guy bounces around." And you I do. do. That. I have you ADHD. Do ba- I you know do. it works for me though. It does. It does. You've never taken Adderall or Ritalin or. Well, this is why I don't think I have ADHD because when I take Adderall, I become superhuman. I'm just like I can fix the world. You know. Yeah, like, that's the whole point. My you, first time you doing can get Ad- focused. My first time doing Adderall. 
I had a friend of mine. I was drinking late night like I was before this podcast. <laughs> but I just when I had a job, I worked at the school and I had to wake up in three hours and go be with your kids. And he was like, yo, just take this. And I was like, this is a drug. I'm not doing this. But then I went to school and I was like, yo, I'm not going to make it through the day. So I said, fuck <laughs> it. I'm going to take it. Pow. I, it was the day before Valentine's Day. I wrote a poem for every one of my ex-girlfriends. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just like, there's Did no way. Did you give them the poem? Uh, yeah. Just to fuck up their life. You know how they, they shared a future oh meme? It's like, you're watching did this Did anybody cool. respond? Like, did it work on anyone? Oh, always. I think, I, I told you, I'm the kind of person that you hate when you're with me, but then you miss when I'm gone. And so all of them are like, oh, shit, I kind of miss a lot of the shit you How did do. you figure that out about yourself? I mean, I'm very self-aware. I feel like that's the key point of, like, being a good person is to be self-aware. Yeah. Okay. If you're oblivious to being an asshole, then yeah. But there's a difference between like being self-aware and not growing and being self-aware and then just be like, yeah, I'm going to make people just like me for who I am and I'm never going to change. No, I mean, I don't say I wouldn't change. Like I do make conscious efforts. I'm just more the genuine. I'd rather be authentic to who I am than to be like, I'm going to suffer to not, you know. Yeah. But sometimes with deal breakers, somebody's like, you will never be my roommate unless you clean this hair up. Like I'll figure it out. But you know. Hey, man, that's the least of our problems, man. Can we talk about why the fuck the air conditioning doesn't work like that? <laughs> man, that's a big one. All right, let's see what else. All right, let's go roommate stories. All right, I, me and Tommy Lee had a crazy story. Um, so Tommy Lee, similar to you, he had a girlfriend that have, would come over often. And mm -hmm. we kind of became like a, a three-way relationship, not in sexual, but just like they were very involved. <laughs> I was involved in their relationship. They were yeah, involved in mine. Yeah, yeah. Like, come Did back they both just... talk to you about their, like, uh, each other? It was, I mean, I didn't want to be like that kind of person in yeah. between where I'm like yeah. negotiating conflict. Yeah. But I would just be able to have conversations with both of them. And uh, so when I would date, it was almost like they were dating with me. And so they were like, oh, we like this girl. We don't like mm -hmm. this girl. And so one time I had a girl that, you know, sometimes... She was like, as me being understanding people, like a lot of people, like this girl's batshit crazy. But I understood she was just emotional and she would get in tune. But one time she called me 73 times one night. I woke up and I had That's 73 lot. missed calls. And any voicemails or just missed calls? Uh, voicemail was full, full up. And, uh, and she was still calling. Like, I caught her. She could have went further, but I answered. Like, what the fuck is going on? Sometimes I wish, like, damn, I wish I didn't answer to see if, like, yo, she got to 250. Like, <laughs> I just want to make sure. I, I want to know what the number was. She loved me. Oh, my God. But that same girl, one time she was mad at me, and uh, she broke in our house. We had a very open environment. Oh we had a God. gate at Did the front door. Did she take door. anything? No, we had a gate at the front door that was always locked, so we would leave our door unlocked because we're like, you know, if you can get yeah. in the gate, you know, you're probably family. And so we knew leave our door unlocked. And so I remember I went out. We had broken up, and I went out. And I remember, you know, as men, we're lazy. And so I washed my clothes. But, you know, when you wash your clothes and they got to dry, it's not like, oh, I'm about to fold these shits up and clean my place up. <laughs> I just threw them on the bed. And I was like, I'm going to do it before I go to bed tonight. I'm going to clean it up. Mm -hmm. But then I got drunk, and so I just moved the clothes to the side. And my clothes were, you know, my relationship that day. And at the middle of the night, 4.30 a.m., she just opens my door, looks at me, and goes, mm. And she starts folding up my clothes. <gasps> And she folds all my clothes. She puts them in the thing. So she, she broke into your house to fold your clothes. And like, and I could, I didn't know she was killing me. You know, you you work about the middle. You've been drinking. Yeah. You, you broke up with. Like, oh shit, this is the last day. You know. So I didn't say anything. Like, what you doing? I was just like, hi, what what's going on? And she got in the bed, and we just fell asleep. And we talked about it in the morning. But after that, me and Tom was like, we got to start locking. Wait, our door. she called you seventy some times. And I didn't bring. Broke over. into your house, got in your bed, and you were like, yeah, that's cool. And she faked a pregnancy. And you still were like, yeah, everything's fine. Pussy was that good. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're so stupid. Oh, my God. We were talking about this last night. I said, you can't keep going to crazy girls. Like, you can't do this. I mean. I, but I'm kind of like. And I'm you not, like it. I'm not a normal person. So, like, sometimes when people are like. Yeah, but. Yeah. I don't uh, want a normal roommate. I don't want somebody basic that's just like, hey, you know. You want a girl that's going to call you 74 times. Break into your extreme. house. Fold your underwear at 430 in the morning. Crawl in bed and then be like, baby, I love you. I'm pregnant. Just kidding. As, as one of my friends put it, he said, not everybody who calls you 73 times is a serial killer. But I can guarantee you every silly or every serial killer will probably call you 73 times. And so I understand there's a there's a limit. So, you know, I don't want no. that crazy. Somewhere I a solid 15, 15 missed calls. Like if you don't call me at least 15 times, you don't love me. I don't have the energy <laughs> to call somebody 15 times. I wouldn't even call my own mother 15 you times. You've never been in love, then, Maria. Yeah, I do, but that's like mm -mm, excessive. Love. You don't you kind of keep your crazy tucked in. 
See that, but that's what when you love somebody, you let that crazy out. That's no, what love is. No. Love is not composure. No, no, love, love is no, stupid. love is not making people fear for their lives. A little bit. When you break somebody's heart, you also got to be a little worried. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were living with Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee when she did that, mm -hmm, Tommy and, and how his come girlfriend. it didn't work out? Me and Tommy Lee, or me and the girl. You and the girl. Oh, me Unless and Tommy, Tommy Lee's pussy was so good. You, uh, you, Tommy Lee misses me. He wants me back as a roommate. Does he really? No, he got fancy. Him and his girl moved together and they got this oh, wow. fancy place. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's, he's a, he's a, See, Tommy a, fell in love and. He was in love back and then. Now, what, yeah, but what, what, what happened with this girl? Oh, my girl? Mm -hmm. Oh, we broke up. I think the, uh, the fake pregnancy was the last straw. I was mm. like, yeah. So that was, yeah. that was the deal breaker? Oh, yeah, it was, it was bad. And so, yeah. Then uh how did she do it? Like what was the what was, I was the surprised. Setup? Oh that that really actually that situation ruined my life later in life. Uh <laughs> <laughs> this was the second time in college it happened. My girlfriend in college, we broke up, but she I was leaving and she was like, Wait, I'm late on my period. And I was like, but that can be like I mean, it, this is another story. But this <laughs> one, it it could have been, and so therefore I wasn't sure. But we broke up and she was like, Fine, you don't want to answer it, I'll just get rid of it. I'm like, huh? And she was like, yeah, I'm pregnant. And I was like, word? And so I told my, one of my good friends, he's like, yo, if you ever get this situation, I've been here before. He said, just be OD happy. Say like, oh, I told my mom, I'm excited, I can't mm. wait for this. And then she's gonna start acting uncomfortable. So I did it to T and she was like, I was mad at you. So I went to the hospital and got rid of it. And I was like, oh. Uh, and you think she was lying the whole time or she told you she was lying? She never admitted to it. People like that don't admit to it, but I have enough That's evidence crazy. to, yeah. Hopefully she's not watching this and be like, you're telling my story. I mean, <laughs> you never know who might see it. This is gonna Brad be Pitt might see it. You just never know. And he makes a movie about it. I'm not the only person that ever got someone to fake a pregnancy. What do you, okay. I feel like that, at this point, I'm such a good roommate. I feel like if I had a female roommate, she's like, you can't leave. I'm pregnant. <clears throat> what could a man do? What's the opposite a guy could do that's like, a, that's like as bad as faking a pregnancy to a woman? I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> 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 you didn't want to kill myself. No, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know what it would be. Like, there isn't really anything that would, like, ruin a woman's life like that. Like, the way that a pregnancy would really, like, throw a guy. Like, that would change your whole life. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, oh. STD, that could be bad. Faking STD, though? Yeah, like, faking herpes. Ooh. Fake syphilis? Well, herpes, that would be crazy. Herpes is common. You got to fake something strong. Yeah, but, you know, fake something you need to go to the doctor for. Fake AIDS? Oh, fake AIDS. That's, that's a terrible person. Could you imagine that? You can leave if you want. I hope you're, enjoy, I hope you're enjoying your time with him because now you guys both probably have HIV. I mean, <laughs> that'll change your life. Pregnancy change your life. <laughs> it's hard to come back from that one, though. Yeah, I was just yeah. fucking with you. Have okay. you ever had somebody, like, break into your bank account and, like, mess with your money like that? Like a girl? Nah. That's good. I'm more open though. Like I'm the type of person like you can take my debit card and go, you know, go to Target, get what you need. Okay. That's why I don't I need, buy tampons. I actually do. Yeah, can I after this? Well, you got to. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's got to be more of a connection, right? You get you catch that in the morning time after I'm laid out and relaxed. You know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh my god, what is it? What what's your like weak spot with women? Like what makes you weak? Um. I, I feel believe like I saw it last them. Night. I believe them. <laughs> you... I'm like, oh, she's honest. Yeah, no. Uh, but like, when you see somebody, like, what's the thing that like gets you? Vulnerability, honesty. Mm. That's most people don't get that. That's the secret I found in life. Most men are like, uh, I have a six figure bank account and uh, I drive a Ferrari, and it's like women mm. don't like that shit. I like the honesty. I like when a woman's like, I shit at myself this week. <laughs> I don't want her to say that because I'm like, yuck. But like that kind of honesty and that's what conversations get deep and that's why I'm like, I know this So person. like, okay, because I asked somebody else's, if somebody like farts in bed, like a woman, does that gross you out? Yeah, you women, just women don't it. fart. That's yeah, they disgusting. do. They, they don't. Yeah, they do. A lady doesn't fart. Yeah, they do. I got news for you. They don't. Well, a woman is silent assassins the bathroom. You don't want to, if I ever just hear a woman ripping ass, I'm like. You've never heard a woman fart? My ex girlfriend used to fart. And? We broke up. This is afterwards. I thought I was like, <laughs> because bitch, of the you farting? farting? No, we broke up and I found out. I'm like, yeah, bitch, yeah, this is the way to keep me away. I don't sound like the best person here. No. That's fine. No, I'm honest. Farting makes you call women bitches. No. 
Yeah, you did. You're like, bitch, you've been farting. <laughs> For a comical thing. You don't say You bitches. said nice things about women the entire time. And then we start talking about farting. You're like, these bitches out here ripping ass. <laughs> if there's a time you're going to call a bitch, you'd be like, bitch, yeah. did you just? Yeah. That's like, I'm like, respectful of women until they start ripping ass. Smells are one of those. People don't realize the nose is like one of your strongest scents. It's like, yeah. there's certain smells you can't forget. Like, I remember a smell. I was at a, a light rail station when I was 15. There was somebody probably going through withdrawals now that I'm an adult. <laughs> that I can put myself right back in that situation. When I see that smell, I go right back to that memory. No, it's and so gross. if a woman ripped ass, like a strong, like, <laughs> I'm never Did you hear that. it? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm, you just smelled it. I, I, was, I live with a woman. I still to this mm. day don't think she farts. Really? She she's good at that. Even in her sleep, like people do it in their sleep. I stay in my house, but I have a bathroom at the bottom, like by the lobby. There's a bathroom, and there's a bathroom like right by the bedroom. Uh -huh. And she would just take the trip in the morning. She'd be like, "Oh, I gotta go out and make a phone call." And <laughs> she would go shit in peace. Yeah, but like, what if you have like you, you know relationship? That's what I'm wondering. But now that like after you know, I had a child. I feel like you haven't been in. Like, yeah, I mean, you, I know you have a kid, but like, I feel like you have some relationship things to learn if you've not been in a relationship with somebody where you've heard them fart. I mean, I'm an adult now. Literally, I've seen a woman give birth. So no surprise, no, not every time, but women shit when they give birth. Yeah, did that happen? Yeah, and I, at that point, it's a different environment. At that point, I'm not thinking about bodily fluids and things like that. But, like, if I woke up and you just shit in the bed on a Tuesday, <laughs> there's a conversation <laughs> that needs to be had. That's the thing. Yeah, well, that's different. Shit, we're talking about shitting and farting. Those are two different things. No, you would just have to get it. You're like, you get the flu, you might shit the bed. It just yeah. happens. It's like, what the yeah. hell? But like, Clean it up, silly. That you know, creates a this mess. Is a five cheater. Just ripping you know? ass doesn't create a mess. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want you to be comfortable around me that if you have to fart, I wouldn't be like, oh, my relationship may be in, let me hold this and maybe <laughs> risk my health. Breaker. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, like, please make sure that we have a certain level of comfortability before you just, like... Uh, but were you the kind of guy, you know, like, some guys, like, fart around their friends or, like, they go fart on their buddy's face and stuff like that. Would you do that? Nah, I wouldn't, wouldn't like that. I had a... Uh, my roommate in college was a big lineman for one of the years, and mm -hmm. his ass would always be farting when he <laughs> used the bathroom. I, I would have girls spend the night... I don't I don't know how college was for you guys, but if you be, like, twin bed, she was sleeping with the bed with a girl. Oh, and yeah. have her whole roommate right there, like, six feet away. And he would wake up in the morning, and he would go pee and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> you're like that's a wonderful alarm clock what the fuck bro but he you knew he did that i think he did that on purpose because he didn't like the fact that i had a girl spending the night probably yeah or I, maybe that made him gassy more, maybe you more. having a girl over would just make him really gassy nah he was doing it intentionally he was mad at me always i had more women you know <laughs> i never did that i was respectful you think i would ever just be farting when he had a girl over that would be disrespectful no but it'd be funny yeah. See, now, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think You're not it a would... 10 on a roommate scale if that's you find it funny. No, no. I, well, I wouldn't do it, but I do think it's funny. Like, I wouldn't do it, but like, it'd be, it's just funny. To, like, we never got an answer on a roommate scale. What do you rank yourself? And then I want to judge I it think, off your Didn't stories. I say like an eight? An eight. Let's be honest. An eight. Do you really think you're an eight on a perfect roommate scale? Yeah. Why would you go eight then? If you think you're an eight, you pretty much think you're a great person. So why not because like, I leave like occasional dishes in the sink and stuff sometimes. Like, if nine, I'm a, nine then. No, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm a pretty good roommate, but like I come home late at night because I'm out doing comedy. And so if you go to bed early, you might hear me come home because I have a dog and sometimes he barks. And then... I'm not an eight seems very Like, I'm not dirty. I'm a little messy, but I try to keep it in my room. Like, I just have clothes and stuff. So why do you go eight and what makes you think you're that high? This sounds to me like... Pretty high, doing? pretty high. All right. I'm just taking it. Because I'm a good-ass roommate. Like, if I cook, I'll share it with you. Or, oh. like, if I need to go to the grocery store, I'll ask oh. you if you need anything. That made me think about Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee used to want to be a chef, and so he would always oh. he would order these wine boxes. He would yeah. just have wine. Yeah. And he would make these, like, crazy, like, fancy chef-like dishes and be like, yeah. try it out, man. I got some for you. Mm. And, like, that's a good roommate. Yeah. Tommy was a good roommate. Yeah. I feel like I was... I feel a, like you love him. Uh, there's, like, for a yeah. roommate, like, if I had to go back, all my roommates would rate it. Yeah. I had Tommy. Harlan was the one that would fart. He was a big dude. <laughs> Harlan would, when he would get mad at me. He would like yeah. do like he would be petty and he would do yeah. stupid shit. Like he would like burst in the room when he knew I was doing something. He'd be like, Come on, Harlan. Like what were you doing? Like you were with a girl? Like clapping some cheeks. 
since you made me say it out loud, I thought you would get the context of it. But yeah, I know. But I, I like, I like to make sure people know. Yeah, exactly I was clapping some cheeks. Yeah. You can hear it. And that is what's the etiquette? What do you if you know your roommate who's in a relationship is having sex? Do you act like you're not there? Do you just or do you got to be you like, a, I got to go Are we talking in a food. dorm or like in where you, Even yeah, everybody like, has their if, own if you, bedroom? A loud, like a loud sexual roommate. I've never really had a loud roommate, but oh. my, our room, like where I live now, our rooms don't share a wall. There's a living room in between. So, but like, I don't know. I've never really. I've heard, heard it. I had it both ways. I've had a girl one time come to my house. And it was like three in the morning mm -hmm. and she was like trying to wake my roommate up. She was making a lot of noise and mm. I was like, relax. <laughs> but then I also had another thing when I was in an Airbnb and one of my friends, he was, he had a woman and she was making so much noise and I was, had a woman and she wasn't making no noise and it made me feel like, hey, speak up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. losing this battle. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. <laughs> there's no middle ground, but no, I don't really hear, but. The walls are like relatively thick for the most part. Like That's if you're in your deal. room on the phone, I can't really hear what you're talking about. So then, oh, no wonder you have good roommate situations. You've been yeah. well off. You've been successful. You've. <laughs> no, I'm I, just, about, I just like where I live. Like I've, I've picked a good place. Do you have place. to share a bathroom? No, we have our own bathroom. No, that's not a roommate. That's a goddamn. That's a. It's like a house. Got, yeah, you share a living area, a common yeah. area. There, but no. Yeah. I'm talking about real roommates. Y'all share a bathroom with you. These walls are thin. I haven't shared a bathroom with somebody since uh, college. Oh my god! You yeah. don't know what a roommate is, girl. I've been LA that's experience. That's not true. Yeah. No. You, know, you don't got to deal with someone pissing on the side of the goddamn toilet. You don't know real problems. That's a conversation. You had to have a conversation with somebody when you're like, yo, you pissed on the seat, my man, and you didn't even try to like yeah, make this right. But I've never lived with a guy. So there's that. Are you ready for that? Do roommates count when you're like a spouse? Have you had a spouse roommate situation here? No, I haven't. You I've need to never, do that next. I've lived with my parents as an adult, but I haven't. And I've lived it's with different. women. Parents are honest. You can be yourself around your parents, you know? Kind of, not, I mean, yeah. Kinda. You can't be getting, you know, I don't want to bring sexual partners back and be loud, but for the <laughs> most part, it's not like I got to tiptoe around my parents' house, you know, you park around your drawers if you want to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, we got to wrap this thing up. Is this an hour? I was it's trying to throw it up. No, I didn't no, even tell you the stories. No. All right. Why? Do you have one, no, one more you want to tell? I was saving the good. You were like, pace yourself. And so I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. Well, you have a watch on. You could have looked. You want to no, do another one? I don't you want to do, do another, another quick one. story? I have a meeting at three. I got to go to work. And this episode isn't the best episode you had. And I'm kind of upset about that. You, well, we, when you started, you said it was going to be the best episode I ever had. Well, I was saving it. I didn't know the time. I thought you were going to leave me in like 10 minutes wrapping up. This is you, our closer. You didn't give me the light. The, so you, you could have said it at any time. And now I'm not going to get a standing ovation for my closer. Are you going to cry about it? I don't cry. Oh, okay. Man, Why man, you cry. really looked at me when I said that? Like, how do, how do, uh, the last thing, and this is we're done. We wrap okay, it up. Yeah. This is the closer. Okay. How do you handle a roommate crying or like a roommate dealing with heartbreak? Uh, I'm a I'm a supportive person. I'll be like, we should go eat something. It's a good roommate. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I like to make people feel better. I don't know. Like, I'm not a super touchy person. Like, my friends growing up weren't really like. Like, they wouldn't necessarily, like, hug you. So, I, I don't know. I try to comfort people. But sometimes people don't want to be touched when they're upset, yeah. you know? It's just, you don't know how to do it if it's awkward. What do you do? Like, you're, like, touchy person. That's why I'm a good roommate. I'm a shitty person. But as a good roommate, if you're going through something, I'm the best person you have. It's like, yeah. first, let's make you feel better. Let's get you to a place of common. And then let's go out and just go have some fun. Let's yeah, go have we'll some go have fun. fun. Like, we'll go shopping. Yeah, shopping, shopping therapy. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I don't cry, but I make sure people have a good time. So, honestly, <laughs> I'm a 10 of 10 on roommates. I was waiting to say that. Oh. Yeah, she went for an 8. I don't believe that. You I mean, don't even you, do the dishes. Yes, but the, the the shit I do good is better than everybody else. Oh, you can do the God. dishes. That's not a skill. I hope I you. never have to live with you because I don't want to find out the Let's truth. Let's move in. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me everywhere. You've been watching this. You know you like my content. You can find me on anything. I don't even post shit on my social media like I should, so I'll post this. Uh, Jared Quay on every uh, uh, platform. Can you spell it? 
J A R E D Q U A Y. Uh, I'm most active on True Social, so yeah, check me out. No, I'm joking. Oh, I was like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever talks about that True Social, huh? No, no. I'm joking. Uh, I have shows if you like sports. I do a lot of sports content with Yahoo. I'm I'm getting ready to do my own podcast for sports because it's oh. great. Yeah, so definitely. Nice. Uh, if you're watching the show, you probably don't like sports though. But if you like me, check me out. <laughs> and I just DM me. I respond to DMs. The craziest shit. So yeah, send me your DMs. I love it. Uh, thank you for having me on this has been fun you're welcome i appreciate it thanks for coming uh you can find me on social at maria bruguer m-a-r-i-a b-r-u-g-g-e-r-e and you can follow room for rent podcasts at room for rent pod on instagram tiktok twitter youtube is uh, my youtube which is maria bruguer and we're available on spotify and apple podcasts see you next time (laughs) 